climate is not what it used to be. Not any longer. The Earth is only inhabitable because of its atmosphere, a thin layer of gas which accommodates thriving life forms with tolerable temperatures and precipitation. The five layers are composed of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and trace amounts of other gases. Weather occurs in the troposphere. The stratosphere contains ozone which filters much of the sun's harmful UV rays, and meteors disintegrate in the mesosphere, then follows the thermosphere and exosphere. Forms of precipitation of water are the result of the circulation of water among the land and sky. The sun's heat evaporates water into the sky where it condenses into clouds and eventually falls back to earth. Runoff from groundwater and from streams collect and the cycle begins again, constantly supplying and dispersing water to the world's ecosystems. As many other systems and processes on the earth, climates are perpetuated by the sun. The Earth is a complex system, and scientists are continually investigating the intricate workings of our home planet. Part of what makes the Earth so unique is its climate. Many scientists are concerned that Earth's climate is changing at an unprecedented rate. How do scientists study how warm the planet is? Here's a look at the tools NASA scientists use to take Earth's temperature. Models are powerful tools for understanding Earth's complex systems. To create a model, scientists must first characterize a system by identifying the processes that govern its evolution. In the 1970s, Dr. James Hansen and colleagues at NASA built a simple climate model to simulate how changes in the atmosphere cause Earth's average temperature to change over time. Hansen's early climate model showed that both human and natural activities could force Earth's climate to change. The model revealed that natural forcings, like volcanic eruptions or changes in the sun's activities, tend to go up and down over long periods of time, but human forcings from greenhouse gas emissions are steadily increasing. Hansen's early simulation revealed that human forcings on climate would dominate in the future, but he needed real-world temperature data on a global scale to determine when. The most reliable measurement of global temperature came from weather stations scattered around the globe. Hansen knew that weather fluctuations would cause short-term changes at individual stations, but he reasoned that taking averages over several years and appropriately weighting each station's data would deliver meaningful temperature information. A consistent trend of warming is visible in both the global temperature data and the global climate model. and threatening our way of life. The five principal climate groups of the Copen system are the following. The first is the humid tropical climate. It is winterless climate, all months having a mean temperature about 18 degrees Celsius. Two types are the following. The wet tropical climates, which lie near the equator, have constantly high temperatures, enough rainfall to support the most luxuriant vegetation found in any climatic realm. An example of this is a tropical rain forest. The next is the tropical wet and dry climates, which are found poleward of the wet tropics and equatorward of the tropical deserts where the rainforest gives way to the tropical grasslands and scattered drought-tolerant trees of the savanna. 
An example of this is the savanna. Next is the dry climate. It is where evaporation feeds precipitation. There is a constant water deficiency. Two types are Next is the humid middle latitude with mild winters climate. Mild winters, the average temperature of the coldest month is below 18 degrees Celsius but above negative 3 degrees Celsius. The three types are the humid subtropical climates which are located on the eastern sides of the continents. In the 25 to 40 degree latitude range, Summer weather is hot and sultry, and winters are mild. In North America, the marine west coast climate extends from the near United States and Canadian border northward as a narrow belt in the southern Alaska. The prevalence of maritime air masses means that mild winters and cool summers are the rule. Dry summers of tropical climates are typically located along the west sides of continents between latitudes 30 and 45 degrees. In summer, the regions are dominated by stable, dry conditions associated with the oceanic subtropical highs. The next is the humid middle latitude with severe winter climate. Severe winter, the average temperature of the coldest month is below negative 3 degrees Celsius and the warmest month in mean exceeds 10 degrees Celsius. Two types are humid continental climates which are confined to the eastern portions of North America and Eurasia in the latitude range between approximately 40 and 50 degrees north latitude. Both winter and summer temperatures can be characterized as relatively severe. Then, subarctic climates which are situated north of the humid continental climates, summers in the subarctic are remarkably warm. Lastly is polar climate. It is a summerless climate. The average temperature of the warmest month is below 10 degrees Celsius. Two types are, first, the tundra climate, which is a treeless climate found almost exclusively in the northern hemisphere. Second is the ice cap climate, which does not have a single monthly mean above 0 degrees Celsius. As a consequence, the growth of vegetation is prohibited, and the landscape is one of permanent ice and snow. Most of the vegetation on Earth is north of the equator. The summer months see an increase in plants and therefore a decrease in carbon dioxide. The fluctuation resulting from this con poses a serious global threat. Scientists have linked the burning of fossil fuels to a rise in carbon dioxide emissions and other greenhouse gases, which in turn correlates with the dangerous rise in global temperature. This is global warming. The top major contributors of greenhouse gas emissions include exhaust from automobiles and smoke from coal burning power plants. An increase of forest fires or deforestation for land clearing has lessened the amount of trees which can remedy excess CO2. Any resource consuming method releasing quantities of carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide or even water vapor contributes to the effect. These mass emissions of gases cause the atmosphere to trap more heat than it does naturally.